best of high-end. Experience the beauty of audio and video. Actually, we had the itch almost from like two years after we designed the Model D. Actually, I did not design the Model D. Uh, that was uh, a couple of other guys at that time. But um, about 10 years ago, we decided to, we wanted to make something that was more expensive than the Model S and less expensive than the Model C. And our speaker engineer, our acoustical engineer, he was working on concepts all the time to do something that was significantly better than the Model S and less expensive than the Model C. And he came up with a lot of ideas of things that was more expensive than the S. But he, well, we did not end up with something that sounded better than the S, even at three times the price. So I was really getting frustrated and uh, I was on the way back from Korea and then it just dawned on me that we should follow the footsteps of the Model D but try to do something that was significantly less than the Model D with a smaller footprint. You know the Model D is two meters and something tall. So also for Asia, it is too overwhelming for a lot of people. And um, so we wanted to do something that was more compact. And I also wanted to do something that, a speaker that would uh, really have a tremendous amount of headroom. Maybe you don't need to play loud, but it's always nice, you know, if, if you have some really great music, you really want to turn it up, you can do that with the Model B. So anyway, I was traveling back from Korea and that is about a 24 hour trip. And I was thinking, 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 how can we do something that is smaller, less expensive, but at least as impactful as the Model D. And then I thought, uh, the heck, we have, to, we have to continue with the dipole principle because the dipole is so wonderful because you're not you don't need any particular space, especially now that we have Room Perfect technology. So I thought, uh, let me try to work out a very efficient way of packing the drivers for a, a dipole. And that then became the kind of a zigzag baffle for the woofer system. So three woofers facing forward, three woofers facing backwards, they are each uh, 34 centimeters wide, but the speaker is only 60 centimeters. So we really had to overlap the drivers, reverse the face of the rear ones. And by doing that and carefully design the surrounding of the, the woofers, we actually pressure loaded the woofers quite a bit, which means that we're kind of squeezing the sound out from the baffle structure. Uh, in a slightly different way than we did with the Model B. And the net result is that we get about 7 dB more headroom than the Model D, which is very significant because headroom really means that also pressure in the room. Uh, and by reversing the woofers, we also reduce the second order harmonic distortion. So what you will realize when you listen to the Model B is that compared to other speakers, it has this ability to do the low frequencies that you can't hear, but you can feel. <clears throat> you see, most speakers have quite a bit of second order harmonic distortion, which means if you put in 20 Hertz, you get a lot of 40 Hertz out also, maybe 1%. But your ear sensitivity is much greater at 40 Hertz than at 20 Hertz, maybe 20 dB, which is about you know, equalizing the perceived level. So typically, even for very good speaker, you may reproduce the 20 hertz, but you're actually listening to the 40 hertz because that's the overtone, that's a second order harmonic. So you never get to experience just the feel of the very low frequencies without so much sound. And that's, that's, a, that's a really nice feeling, you know, like being in a, 
if you are in, in a big church and you hear the organ, you, you barely hear it, but you feel it. And that's what you can experience with the Model B. So in terms of design, it's a very efficient design. It's a, also, uh, let's say, a format that appeals to a lot of people. So the product has sold a lot better than our Model D. Uh, I actually, during that long trip back, I was not asleep at all. I was just designing the whole mechanical structure. So when I got back to Denmark, I had the complete drawings ready to send out for manufacturing. So everything was designed up. And uh, I came back and I said, make this <laughs> now. And so we got all the parts made, and of course there were tiny, small mistakes. The other guy said it was big mistakes, but well, small mistakes. So we put it together. We um, put the amps on. Uh, we did the filtering. And even right out of the box, the first time we listened to it, it sounded fantastic. Uh, it took maybe one hour, and then it was sounding better than almost anything we ever heard because the basic principle is so damn good. It's a dipole. We have the very, very good drivers from the Model D and the Model S and so on that we've been using. We know exactly how to apply the DSPs and so on. Uh, so it they would, was really fabulous from the first listen. Then, of course, we had to streamline the design a little bit and so on. That took another few months. And then we put it in production and it's been tremendously successful since. We have, of course, you know, the fully digital amps and, and all of these tools that makes life easy for us. Uh, but what we have seen with the Model B is that uh, it is probably, it is the most flexible speaker we ever had. So in a room like this, works perfectly. Last week I was in, Swe in Norway in a room that was, uh, had a reverb time of about eight seconds. It was horrible, but the Model B sounded wonderful. After doing Room Perfect, it sounded just fantastic again. So it's a super flexible speaker. Um, of course, it's expensive to make. We make it out of 42 millimeter thick aluminum, or we actually use thicker billets of aluminum, and we cut it down to 42 millimeters for the baffles. Uh, so we use about 450 kilograms of aluminum for each speaker before we do all the machining. So it's made like the other Steinway speakers, uh, all aluminum, extremely stiff, so there's absolutely no resonances in the system whatsoever. It's efficient also, the mid-range is about 95 dB, the tweeter is 96 dB. So we have an enormous amount of headroom with, uh, we have four times about 600 watts into each speaker. You know, in, in, in Steinway terminology, um, the Steinway Model B stands for the big one, and the Model D stands for, stands for the damn big one. <laughs> But uh, actually, in, in our case, uh, B, yeah, it is. Uh, it's probably the thing that takes it most apart from other speakers is that the, the physical uh, impact of the bass, because the bass is so fast that you can have more apparent level in the bass without getting into something that sounds resonant or boomy or anything like that. Uh, and I, I, that's really what people also appreciate. It gives the same kind of feel with the music that you get in a real life concert. You know, when you listen to a lot of high-end systems, they're really too skinny in the bass. If you go out and in a concert hall, you're always surprised how warm it is. There's not so much mid and high frequencies. There's not a lot of tingling at the very high frequencies. But then when you listen to a hi-fi system, they're skinny in the base, not enough body. And the Model B can give you the body without giving you a bloated sound. And that's really what gets to you. It also, you know, when you think about headphones, you know headphones ought to be really, really good in the base. But compared to the Model B, 
they're nothing. It's like totally inadequate. You hear more bass detail from the Model B than you do from a pair of really, really good headphones. And that's amazing considering the Model B is in the room with live acoustics and, and, and all of that. But you really understand the bass much more when you listen to the Model B than in a head, pair of headphones. And you get the physical impact. Well, the, the, the dipole principle is good because you have less total radiation of energy into the room uh, versus the SPL, the sound pressure level, in your listening position. The dipole, of course, radiates to the front and to the back and very little to the side. Then you can say that, oh, but you do get a reflection from the back side of the speaker, from the wall behind. But because we make the speaker with the same frequency response going forward and backwards, the reflections sound really nice. And they're not typically very early. So they sound like reflections from a musical experience. Uh, so it's, um, it is always sounding pleasant and good. And what is interesting is that the, from a normal speaker, you get a lot of reflections from the rear wall. But those reflections don't sound good because when you listen to the speaker from the rear side, that's not a good sound. But that sound is hitting the wall behind the speaker and coming back to you, and it's not a good sound. Whatever is reflected from a Model B or any good, well-designed dipole has the same character as a direct sound, and therefore it's not detrimental to the perceived quality. Actually, our crossover is at 350 hertz. But the woofers themselves are super light, very short voice coil, very deep magnet gap. So the advantage of that is that when they move, they do not modulate the overtones. So a typical woofer has a, a short magnet gap and a long voice coil. And as soon as it starts to move, when it's not in the center of the gap, you lose power. You don't do that in this. And that's why when you listen to uh, some really heavy bass that we listened to before, together with a male voice, there's no modulation of the voice. It almost sounds like the voice is reproduced by one speaker system and the bass is reproduced by another. But that's because we don't have this uh, power factor modulation in the woofers. And then we have so much cone area in the woofers that they actually even when we play so that we can really have a physical experience, they don't move very much. Um, of course, the woofers are designed to move quickly. They're not designed to have a low resonance frequency. So if you tap the woofer, it just goes so cluck cluck. There, there's no tone to the woofer. We're not using a, a low resonance frequency to do the low frequencies. So it's super fast. And then we control the frequency response by the DSP. And thereby we do something that starts and stops quickly. You'll also notice that one of the issues you often have with other speakers is that you have like an overshoot in the bass and all of a sudden the, the bass bottoms out and so on. And that can in many cases be because the cone, the moving mass is high and then you put something in motion that won't stop again. We don't have that issue with, with this kind of woofer design. So this woofer was designed for the Model D originally, and we're still using the same in the Model B now. So each of the woofers weighs 12 kilos, so we have 72 kilos of woofers in each speaker. That's interesting. The mid-range is a five and a quarter inch, but it has a big neodymium magnet, about the same size that you would use if it had been a ferrite magnet, but it's a much more powerful magnet. So the mid-range is very efficient, the tweeter is very efficient. So efficiency of the mid and high speakers are close to that of a horn speaker, but without any of the issues you can have with horn speakers. So you still have the very, very open and balanced sound. Of course we use four amplifier channels for each Model B. 
But remember, our fully digital amplifier has a super sophisticated power supply. So when you push a lot of energy into the woofers, it does not affect the other channels. So the power supply has a tremendous uh, signal to noise. So the noise floor is minus 137 dB. And the, there is no ripple on the power supply. So even when you push a lot of energy into the woofers, it does not affect the mid-range or the tweeter at all. Completely unaffected by that. So in a normal, if you, even if you take a normal system and do bi-amping, which can be a very good thing, then maybe one of the amplifiers drawing so much current from the grid that the other amplifier sees the voltage going up and down, and that will make the sound go up and down. And then you have this unsteady sense with the music. You don't have this total stability at the mid and high frequencies. So, and then it's a driver design also, and also the fact that we have a tremendous amount of headroom. You, you can never say never, but it is, uh, the, I can say that I've, I played it in a lot of different places, in Singapore, in China, in, in Korea, and so on. And every place where I have heard the system, also at Hi-Fi Corner, at Willy's uh, place, Every place I heard the Model B, I thought, I've never heard it sound better. <laughs> because you, you, you get into the groove with this sound and you love it more and more. So uh, I think it's, I, I'm, I'm proud that we could make this, you know. I, I, I did the cosmetic design and the basic concept, but I have so many clever people working for me and they are so dedicated to improving quality all the time that uh, also our software, our room perfect and so on, everything is so well designed. It's, uh, you know, we've made many thousands of channels of room perfect. We never ever had a fault in room perfect, never ever. We designed the multi-channel products, multi-channel processors. We are the only high-end com high company who designed a complete system in-house, including the multi-channel processor. Nobody else is doing that nowadays. Nobody. So, uh, but I have guys that are so dedicated, and it is a lot of work, uh, but they're so dedicated to, to the quality and the, the performance of the product. We have a tremendous amount of ability with our hearing. The ears, the ear-brain combination is much, much more uh, sophisticated in many ways than our eyes. You know, you can see a movie with uh, 30 frames per second and you think it's continuous uh, movement. It's not, but it only takes 30 frames per second to fool you into believing that you're watching a movie when you're actually watching a dias show <laughs> with different <laughs> pictures right, all the time. The ear has a far greater ability to discern time. Uh, the ear is 10,000 times faster than the eyes, at least. But sound is 900,000 times slower than light. So that's what is giving us acoustics. If light and sound had the same speed, there would be no acoustics because everything would be steady state in the room and so on. And that's one of the things that makes it so interesting because you have the acoustics from the venue, you have, you have the acoustics from your reproduction system, from your speaker, you have dispersion characteristics and so on. So designing a speaker system and, and uh, the, the associated uh, digital systems for room correction and so on is a hugely complex process. But our ears are so damn good also in dynamic range, 120 dB, easy. Our eyes have a dynamic range of 50 dB. If our eyes had the same dynamic range as our ears, it would never be dark. Virtually never be dark. So what I'm trying to say is, with too many words is, we're never gonna be finished. In another few years, there's going to be something that is marginally better because our ability to hear differences is fantastic, simply fantastic. 
And that's also why I think it's such a bloody waste that young people nowadays never get to experience really, really fantastic sound. Because the way you process sound in your brain and with your ears and so on is tremendous. You have three dimensionality, you have depth, you have tonality, you have pitch, you have everything. And it actually is proven that when you listen to some really good music, you use much more of your brain than when you watch a movie or anything else. So I think it's, it's like criminal if kids are brought up listening to a mobile phone and lousy headphones. It's kind of criminal because I think they will have less of a brain development. That's maybe a provocative statement, but I think so. You know, it's, it's, it's very often so that really brilliant people are good musicians, good ma mathematicians at the same time. The guy who invented this amplifier technology we're using, brilliant, super brilliant mathematician, fantastic musician also. And what came first, I don't know. So maybe he would not have been so good at math if he hadn't played the cello. So um, it's interesting, it, but it's anyway, Probably we're gonna do something that is even better. We have though, I can say, one thing that is really, really good in our systems is that it's software upgradable. So when we introduced the Model B one and a half year ago, we had slightly different algorithms to drive the drivers and so on. So now with, if you update your P100 driving the Model B, it sounds better than it did 12 months ago and it's, downloadable from the internet. So that's a huge advantage. Also, everything we can do with the voicing and so on um, is a huge advantage. So we learn a little bit. Model D sound a lot better now than it did 10 years ago and it didn't cost the customers anything. Because every time I'm out in a new venue and listen to the Model B and Model D and so on, I take small notes. A little bit here, a little bit there. <clears throat> and then after a few months, we put it into the software when I'm 100% sure. That's why I go to a lot of our end users also for the big expensive systems and listen to the system in their homes and make my observations of how Room Perfect interact with the system and so on. Best of high end. Experience the beauty of audio and video. Sign up for free at bestofhighend.com.